warning if you watch this entire video all the way to the end it will have a profound effect on your life don't believe me i dare you welcome y'all i'm jen and this is jay and together we push play if you guys really enjoyed our real life dexter by mr ballin you guys are going to love today's video that we picked out it's been years since i've seen it and i want to see it again so i guess it's more of a review than a reaction but it's by Omar Gosh TV. He typically does paranormal investigations and exploring and that kind of thing. This video was more of a story type video and he does an awesome job with it. The title of that video is called Chilling Final Moments Caught on Camera. Let's get started. A Little bit of a trigger warning here. The stories and footage you're about to see may be disturbing if you have a phobia of drowning or a phobia of heights, that'd be me. Don't forget to smash that like button just like I smashed my thumb yesterday with a hammer, ouch. I've been getting a lot of you reaching out to me saying, hey Omar, I haven't seen any of your new uploads. Well, that's probably because you don't have notifications on, so make sure to hit that bell so you do not miss out on my brand new uploads. Thank you so much. And as a thank you, I'm gonna give you a bite of this onion right here. Ew. Also, you guys, I smashed my toe. Look at this. I feel his pain on that. Poor things. A 39-year-old car salesman from California was really passionate about helping others, especially the homeless community. If you know anything about California, especially Southern California, Los Angeles, San Diego, their homeless situation is quite sad. Now, Robert wanted to do something about it using his stuntman skills that he went to school for. Now, this particular stunt that he was about to do, he had been planning for seven years at Niagara Falls, and two other times he attempted to do this stunt, but friends talked him out of it, and for good reason it was dangerous on October 1st 1995 that day would finally come when Overacker would attempt to ride his water ski over the Canadian Horseshoe Falls in hopes to bring awareness to the homeless community so he entered the Niagara River near the Canadian power plant riding on his personal watercraft aka jet ski and there was some stickers placed on the side of it saying save the homeless if you've ever been in Niagara Falls it is covered with tourists it doesn't matter when you go, it could be cold, it could be hot, there's a lot of people. On this particular day, there was about two to 3,000 tourists visiting the area. Could you imagine going on a vacation to Niagara Falls and think- I want to go and actually see the uh, like mist and stuff that forms, you know, like it's that thick mist and stuff. That would be cool. Taking yourself, it's just a normal day and all of a sudden you see a water ski going right towards the falls. I mean, what do you do at that point? Do you panic? Do you call the police? I'm pretty sure there was a ton of 911 calls. Now there was a police officer that was witnessing this whole thing. His name was Richard Daniels and he was a witness to Robert launching his water ski 300 feet upstream. Now as Robert is going down the Niagara River, there was a road that ran parallel to the river that Officer Daniels was on and he was yelling and pleading with Robert to please stop. Obviously he knew that he was not only breaking the law but about to do something really stupid and he kept yelling at him like, don't do this, please stop, pull over. And Robert kept yelling back at him, not a chance. I mean, think about it. Robert had been waiting seven years to do this stunt. Nothing in the world, including a police officer, was gonna stop him. Plus, Wow, I understand what the guy was trying to do, but oh my, like. There's better ways. Wow. So all these people are about to witness his death. Probably. Oh gosh, okay. Plus. It didn't matter. I mean, he was obviously already breaking the law. I mean, he was going to get arrested either way. So why not just carry out the stunt that he had been planning? So there was no reasoning with Robert at all. He was unstoppable. Now, instead of being scared and turning back around, he speeds up to get closer to the falls. 
and launches himself over the falls. And as he does that, he sees the crowd of people. People are just looking around in amazement, just staring at him. His brother, his best friend is in the same crowd cheering for him. But once he got to the brink of the falls, he feels his water ski fall beneath him just as planned and his rocket propelled parachute that was strapped to his back never discharged, causing him to plummet into the falls below. Yeah, well. Oh my gosh. I mean, play with the ball, get the horn, you know. Oh, <laughs> I, I think if I'd seen that in person, I think I would have. You'd have cried. Uh, yeah, I would have had a panic attack and I probably, yeah. I, I would have cried. That would have. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And to have all those witnesses. Well, at least there's a bunch of people that tell a bunch of people not to do it. Yeah. And hopefully it wasn't for nothing. Hopefully they got his message out that he wanted to get out. Well, he so... got his message out. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. So what happened? What went wrong? Robert had been planning this for seven years. You'd think things would go a little bit more smooth, but it didn't. We may never know exactly what happened, but there's stories out there saying that Robert probably forgot to pack his parachute, and when he realized this error, it was too late. Now, this all happened so fast, and it did take a second for everybody to see Robert down below, and at first, people thought that he survived this fall because it looked like he was down there swimming, so they thought that was actually the power of the falls moving around his lifeless body, creating the illusion of him swimming. The mate of the mist boat comes close, brings him on board, tries to perform CPR, but like I said, it was too late. People are yelling in the crowd, there's people crying, there's people in complete shock. They don't know what's going on. They think that it could be just an act for TV. Robert was the 15th person since 1901 to go over the falls intentionally. I believe he was the fifth one to lose his life. And yes, yeah, some people have survived. Now, shockingly, it wasn't the fall that took Robert's life. In fact, he didn't even have a single broken bone. An autopsy report later revealed that Robert's cause of death was drowning. Wow. That's mm. crazy. He didn't even have a broken bone. And the other crazy fact that he threw in there is that people have survived that jump. That's insane. Yeah. I know what I'm going to be Googling here in a little bit. Yeah, I'm not doing it. <laughs> well, I just, I'm, I'm curious to know who, first of all, had the bright idea to do that. And then second of all, like, who, like, wow, I'm just, like, I'm in shock. I'm in shock. That is crazy. Free falling. Here we go. On February 22nd, 1970, a 14-year-old Australian teen by the name of Keith Sapsford snuck onto an airplane that was leaving Sydney, Australia, in hopes to get away for a couple of weeks because he was in this Catholic school that his parents recently put him in, and he absolutely hated it. The way he snuck on this plane is something you're not going to want to miss. We'll get to that in a second. Keith was born in 1956, which happens to be the same year my parents were born, in Ranwick, a suburb of Sydney, Australia, in New South Wales. His father, Charles Sapsford, described Keith as a curious kid who was always on the move. Keith was growing restless of Australia and was always getting into trouble, so his parents thought, hey, let's put him in this school and it will probably straighten him out. Now, after just a couple of short weeks, his need for adventure and wanderlust behavior became apparent, and that's when he ran away and ended up at the Sydney airport. Now, back in the 1970s, it was a lot easier to make it onto a tarmac. Nowadays, if you jump over a fence and the camera catches you, more than likely you got bit on the butt by a German Shepherd, maybe a couple of them, maybe you got even shot at a couple of times, and that's if you're lucky. That wasn't the case for Keith, he made it just fine, but to be honest, it probably would have been better for him on this day to get caught before he got onto the tarmac and this is why. Oddly enough, he got this idea after his dad shared a story with him of this young boy who would sneak on the undercarriages of airplanes, but would later on die because of the high altitude. Now, Keith thought he would be a lot smarter than this kid and was very confident that he can avoid the dangers of the high altitude and where he hid, and that's why he chose this particular place. Sadly, this would be the very last decision that Keith ever made. Tragically, Keith never realized that the wheel compartment that he was sitting in would open up 
once the plane reached a certain altitude for the wheels to come back in, causing him to fall 200 feet down below to his death. What makes this story even crazier is that there's an amateur photographer down below testing out a brand new camera and as he's testing out his camera and taking photos of the airport, he waits for this airplane, this particular airplane, to take off into the air. Once he sees it take off and it's up in the air for him to get a nice photo, he snaps a picture and to his surprise, he catches this. Aww. I wonder if you'll do that again. Oh, yeah. My bad. Wow. That was, that was a kid, like... <sighs> it's so sad. I don't have nothing to say on that one. So sad. But it was a remedial thing to do. You can get in bit. Yeah, I just... I don't, and I, I, I'm not gonna comment anymore. Picture perfect. So this third story takes place back in Niagara Falls some 16 years later. Ayano Tokomasu, a 20 year old from Japan, she was described as a fun loving bubbly spirit who craved being outside, exploring the world. She loved anything new and exciting and wanted to experience everything that life had to offer. Now the perfect opportunity for Ayanu came where she became a foreign exchange student from Japan and was able to travel to Toronto, Canada to take English classes. And she did just that at the Hansa Language Center. One of her teachers said that she was very fluent, spoke English better than anybody in her class. And he can even recall this time where this Swedish boy that that she kind of liked wasn't returning any of her calls and text messages instead of being negative about it she was very positive and said life goes on oh well she had the attitude like his loss at a girl she was always sharing jokes and smiling and it was very easy for Ayano to make friends and she did just that in the short amount of time that she was in Toronto Canada the campus director said that she had registered for two classes and was just one week away before finishing on a beautiful day August 14th 2011 Ayano and a friend of hers from school decided to visit Niagara Falls Ayano had never been before had always wanted to go and she thought this would be a perfect opportunity because she wasn't that far away. Dressed in her bright red sweater and wearing big sunglasses, she gazed over the falls in admiration. She couldn't believe what she was seeing. And I'm not sure if you've ever visited Niagara Falls. I used to live close to there and I'm telling you, it just never gets old. Everybody should experience Niagara Falls once in their lifetime, but not like this. Yeah. Yeah, I I honestly, I, I've always wanted to go. I, that's one place I haven't been. Jay and I both, we we love traveling. We actually used to travel and install Wi-Fi. Ayano wanted to get that perfect photo, so she had her friend hold her camera while, according to eyewitnesses, she climbed over the railing and she straddled herself to the railing, she has this pose where she's overlooking the falls and that's what she wanted. While she's straddled to this railing, she's holding an umbrella and posing for the camera. Her friend snaps the photo and when Ayanu got up, she lost her footing and ended up falling sadly into the falls. Police conducted an investigation and they said that the umbrella might have played a role into Ayanu falling. And it makes a lot of sense. If you ever held an umbrella, especially on a windy day, you know that sometimes it can get pulled by the wind. Chances are the umbrella caught some wind and it is very windy in Niagara Falls. A lot of weather there. The following Tuesday in classroom 508, instead of English being heard in different tones and accents, instead of sounds of books hitting the desks, pages flipping, conversations of last night's homework, instead it was deafened by silence and the somber of students and friends who were taken in this loss of their friend that used to sit in this empty desk where she once sat with her cute round cheeks and beautiful smile. Here you'll see what this family thought was a perfectly normal picture of their trip to Niagara Falls. But if you look closely, you can see Ayano in the background standing against the railing just before taking her final photo that sadly ended her life. Her death is what sparked warnings for tourists that when they're visiting the falls, not to climb or stand over the railings. You yeah. know, that's that is, that is crazy. They they do put those signs up for reasons. Like even here locally where we're from, we have a bunch of dams and 
you know, they, they've got railings up and things like that to keep you protected. And, you know, yeah, you might want that awesome shot, but it's not, it's not worth your life. Like, it really, it's not. Definitely not. not. Like, I, I would, oh, boy. Yeah, listen to the sounds. Now, this next story and footage is probably one of my favorites. It's also the most chilling. Richard Raglan was that popular kid in school that everybody loved. He was involved in high school theater. He even played a star role as Conrad Birdie in a Bye Bye Birdie live production at school. He went on to college just before joining the National Guard. He was described as a full of love, full of energy type of guy who loved helping others. During the summer of 2017, Richard and a couple of his buddies decided to leave Sandy Springs Georgia where he was from and visit Gatlinburg, Tennessee. If you know anything about Gatlinburg, Tennessee and its neighboring town Pigeon Forge, there's so much to do there. It's a beautiful area located in the Smoky Mountains. Happens to be one of my favorite family vacation spots, but it does get very busy on June. Yeah, see a lot of people get nervous about coming up because people go missing and stuff all the time and it's like we hardly hear about that or anything and like it's their backyard anyway, so it's like, I don't, I don't know. It's not amazing to me, like, it's a lot of people. Yeah, we're, we're really close to this place, so this story is probably going to tug at my heartstrings just because it's in my backyard. And, you know, also Dollywood, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that theme park, but it's Dolly Parton's theme park that's also located there. But, yeah, it's a great place to bring your family and vacation. It, it's definitely, it, it. you don't really have like a touristy feel up there, but it is definitely. Yeah, it depends a, on whenever you go really, on the touristy thing. Yeah, yeah, I guess that too. It, yeah, and it depends on the time of year and stuff, but it's in our backyard. So this story took place in our backyard. June 4th, 2017 just a couple of days before Richard's 23rd birthday. Him and his friends were on their way back home to Sandy Springs, Georgia, and wanted to make a pit stop to go swimming, take some pictures at this beautiful waterfall known as Foster Falls. Now, Foster Falls is in the South Cumberland State Park, which is located not too far away from Chattanooga, Tennessee. They were doing a lot of swimming, taking photos, video selfies of him and his buddies just having a great time laughing smiling cracking jokes as richard's doing a little bit of swimming he got pulled beneath the water and tragically drowned a friend of his jumped into the water to try to save richard but it was too late now this is where the story gets a little crazy in fact i'm gonna put my hat on backwards just for this oh oh when omar gosh says this something like this man hold on to your seat he gets those crazy eyes like that yeah yeah crazy okay okay so let's brace for this <sighs> all right let's hear it this part two years after this accident happened a youtuber by the name of rich aloha who does these really cool underwater scuba diving videos where he treasure hunts. Well, he decided to go treasure hunting at Foster Falls. Now, when Rich got to Foster Falls, he was greeted by two park rangers and they informed him of what had happened just two years prior and did tell him to keep an eye out in case he does happen to come across something that could have belonged to Richard. While Rich is down there scuba diving, he's looking around everywhere and you know, he has the eye for finding things and he has to dig a little bit here and there. He ends up finding a bracelet, a ring, even finds a turtle shell, finds some sunglasses. As Rich is getting ready to call it a day, he was even low on oxygen. Something told him to keep looking. So he goes down a little bit further and something catches his eye. He sees the screw sticking out of the ground and at first, you know, just looks like a regular plastic screw. As he keeps digging where the screw is, it happens to be a GoPro. Now GoPros do have this little tiny screw that's on the side and when he pulls it out, you could hear the excitement in his voice. Like he's just so excited that he just found a GoPro. It did look like it was down there for a long period of time. Now I'm not sure if the GoPro worked. It looked pretty broken to me. The footage you are about to see are Richard Raglan's final moments of life. Before we see that, you guys, I just want to comment, like, that looks like it would be an awesome hobby. The scuba diving and, like, finding treasures and stuff. Oh, 
you know, because our, our lakes from, like, around here where we're at, they actually, like, there's whole towns under our lakes. It's just the, you grow up hearing the stories of how they flooded these neighborhoods in order to build these dams and things around so that we could have uh, electricity and the things that we have nowadays. I've always, like, wondered what it looks like under there, you know, and it just, I, I think it's fascinating that he, he does the uh, treasure hunting underwater like that that's that's bad a s s we're gonna live life all right that's right let's go let's get it let's get it yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> the thing is all you got to do is make a decision to get good at something that's worth actually getting good at you start to not take your life for granted and not allow people to manage your life richard lee ragging the third 22 year old entrepreneur Let's live life, baby. Amen. Amen to that. Live life. Yeah! Let's get it! We live in life. Being with brothers and sisters, we live in life. We live in life. We live in life. See, the thing is, one thing, one common goal that we all share is the same goal. <laughs> Hey, it's so cold now, real talk. All three of us brothers, all three of us brothers, all Joe Society, we here, we've made a decision. we made a decision to live a lifestyle that most people don't like. Most people, most people don't live. Look at this, look at this. Look at this. Live This is only the beginning. I don't know about you, but watching that bro. I mean, yeah, like, I'm feeling my, before we hear Omar's comments, like, I mean, watching it, like, you know it's his last moments, but you also know that he's happy, like, he, wow, like, I'm, he was living his life to the fullest, and, and that's, that's what's awesome, that's what's awesome, you know, I mean, it, it's sad that his life had to end the way that it did, my eyes are, like, watering up. But anyways, okay, let's let's get the rest of this. Broke my heart. I mean, all I kept hearing in my mind was, we're living life, we're living life. Like, that's what he kept saying. The YouTuber that found this GoPro wasted no time at all and got a hold of Raglan's family to deliver them this footage. Sadly, a couple years back, there was footage that was mailed to the mother that was on a flash drive, but when she received the packet from the park ranger, somebody had stolen the flash drive out of the envelope. Who knows what that footage contained? Maybe it was security footage. Maybe it was footage from someone else's camera. The family was extremely thankful because it did help with some closure. All of this footage shows Richard having fun, laughing, smiling, joking around, and most of all, living his life to the fullest. All right, put the hat back. I'm thinking about making this a series of people's final moments. If you did enjoy it, make sure to smash that like button, but don't smash your thumb like I did. If you have any ideas, please throw them my way. Let me know in the comments what you thought. And please keep these families that lost loved ones in your thoughts and prayers. Gotta go for now before you leave. Give me a kiss. Peace. Yeah. And as a... Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. As a thank you, I'm going to give you a bite of this onion right here. <laughs> okay, look. Oh. I like onions, but biting into a raw one? Mm -mm. Feel bad for Tiffany getting kisses later. <sighs> yeah. Oh boy. Oh boy. Ugh. Get some. All right. Final thoughts on that video. I I'm definitely I, I definitely appreciate the life that I have, the life that I'm living and the way Omar did that video with the footage, the storytelling skills, the facial expressions, like everything, he, he did an awesome job on that video and I really enjoyed it. And it definitely pulled at some heartstrings. It's just one of those videos. I really enjoyed it. 
Your final thoughts? I mean, I learned not to jump off Niagara Falls. And also, Our cats are crazy, y'all. I mean, just live life to the fullest. Make yourself happy every day. Don't wait on somebody to do it for you. I mean, use that dude's words. I mean, young entrepreneur, no clue what was about to happen. Just out there and bam. Definitely makes you appreciate the moment that we're in now. Like, we're able to do this now. I mean... And it, it's the same thing, like, I, I grew up knowing that you never go to bed angry. You always tell people you love them and give them a kiss. Even even if you're so mad at each other, you know, um, don't go to bed angry. Don't walk out the door angry. Or even if you are angry, you still, you still give that person a hug and a kiss goodbye. Mm-hmm. We always do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyways... Until next time, y'all. Bye. Mm-hmm. <sighs> oh, blah, 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 blah.